Doug Painter's earlier experience had all the excitement, risk and danger one could want from a hunt for grizzly without taking a grizzly. It did whet his appetite for bear though, and now it is a different year in a different area where Painter will be hunting with Alaska guide Jim Weininger and will be accompanied by hunting consultant Jim Riley. He hopes that this time the weather and the grizzlies will be in his favor. We're hunting outside of Lake Iliamna. The area we hunt is remote. There's only four permits for over 1.3 million acres. So it's very pristine wilderness. One of the things in hunting grizzly bears, you always have to give them the respect they deserve. They live out in the uh, tundra areas here where they're having to fight and scavenge for a lot of their food. So they become pretty territorial and very unpredictable, making them pretty dangerous. Where do you think they'll be? Mostly down in these well, in these draws down by the water there? Yeah, this little creek on the other side of the ridge here, uh -huh. there's fish in that creek. So they'll be feeding along that creek. But they also come out on these little feeders and up into the blueberries. Uh huh. And we're able to stay up on this ridge so we're not stinking up our, exactly. our hunting Exactly, exactly. So once we get into camp, you can't fly and hunt on the same day. So we took up a couple vantage points on top of the mountain to glass the valleys below into the blueberry patches and streams to see if we could spot a bear to go after the next day. You know, hunting these grizzlies up here is sort of like a three-act play, if you will. You know, the first act really is spotting the bear. And, and in this big country, that's often hard to do. There, he's just coming through the alders on this side. I've got him. Boy, he moved quickly through that. Oh yeah, he's hungry. He moved quickly through that. Whenever you see a lone bear like that working, that's uh, a good sign that he's a well, pretty good bear. It, it rules out the Cubs program. Yeah. He's not swinging his front yeah. shoulders straight. His front shoulders are swinging yeah. out. Yeah. Usually it's a little heavier bear, a larger bear. We were very lucky the first night to spot a bear. It was late in the evening, but we saw him out feeding in a big blueberry patch. Really good bear. Great big typical Southwest Alaskan grizzly. So we went to bed pretty excited. On a bow hunt for elk near Cody, Wyoming, Ron Lemming and his son had no idea that they were to become the next chapter. We had heard an elk bugle across the canyon, so we got set up. Dad went down in front of me probably 40 yards or so, and then I dropped back a little bit and we started calling. and he called in a bull, and it popped up right down below me about 40 yards, and then it turned and went over to my left, and I couldn't see it. You know, the wind was right, everything was right, and all of a sudden the elk just took off. I was looking down at my dad, trying to figure out what was going on, you know, there was no reason for this elk to take off, and then I heard a, a branch break behind me, turned around, and that bear was standing there looking at me at 20 feet away. Get out of here! First thing I did was just threw my arms up and hollered, get out, get out of here. here. I turned around and I saw the bear running and I thought, oh my gosh, that bear's gonna maul my son. He laid his ears down and came straight at me at full speed. He chased me right around the tree and then I went straight down the hill. I just went to full draw and shot when he was about 10 yards from me. I actually seen an arrow fly right by my leg. The bear either hit him or he tripped right by me. And he was fighting the bear right at my side. I remember feeling him bite my arm like it was getting smashed in a vise. And he was on top of me and I was just trying to fight him off as good as I could. And I started beating on the bear with the bow. And I felt him get off me. I turned around and he took a couple steps towards my dad. And, and I thought, oh boy, I'm going to be in trouble. And then the bear just turned and walked down the hill about 20 yards. That was probably one of the scariest times because I thought for sure he was going to come back. And pretty soon I seen the bear just roll over and I knew it was dead. It all happened so fast. It seemed like forever, but probably two minutes at the most. He was just covered in blood and I knew he was hurt bad. And I had blood all over me and 
I didn't, at first I didn't know if it was mine or the bear's or what had happened. And I had a bite all the way through my left hand. I had a bite on my right elbow. It bit in from the top and the bottom and went right to the bone. And then I had a bite in my back. I got pretty lucky, it could have been way worse. And I believe that if he hadn't ran, if he would have laid there and played dead, he might be dead. People say, you know, never run from a bear. You know, if it didn't happen in the way it did, we both would have been way worse off. You just do what you do and hope it's the right thing. Well, let's have a seat here, All Doug, right. and see if we can look over where we saw your bear last night. And uh... We knew we probably wouldn't see him again until the evening of the next day. Not bothering him. Let's see if he comes back out here, and then we'll make a play on you, you guys call this the witching hour as it gets uh, to be about 6, 6, 30, 7 o'clock at night when they come back out. just above where he was last night in the next, in that next blueberry patch past that little strip of alders. Jim, our guide, he's a great guide. He spotted the bear, but it wasn't where it was originally, but probably about a half a mile beyond. Gathered up our packs and said, come on, we gotta go. I was a little concerned on the distance we had to go, whether we could get to him before we lost, uh, lost daylight. Doug, let's drop some gear that we don't need. Leave it here by this bush. We can see that really easy. And uh, then we'll get closed in on the bear. He's just up here a couple hundred yards. I think he's down you well. You smoked him. Watch him for a second. He might get another breath. I think he's down well. Good job. He's well. I think he's well hit. I think you got him, buddy. All right. People often talk about just how tough these grizzlies really are, but until you experience it, it's something else. That 300 grain trophy bonded bullet went right in the boilerplate. That bear just pumps up and starts running. That first shot was absolutely where it needed to be. Knowing that that first shot was gonna kill the bear is not enough. Having it wind up in bad cover is just a, a, a nightmare. You know, most game animals would have dropped right down from there. He was down within 100 yards. A great trophy, what a super bear. What a great looking bear, Jim. You know, Jim, I've, I've hunted brown bear and out on the Alaska Peninsula, I've hunted brown bear out in Far East Russia, but not the grizzly itself. I don't know if there's a tougher animal out there. I haven't seen I, him. I mean, That's that why bear to him. was right through the shoulders. Yeah. And he's dead. He just yeah. doesn't know it. He just doesn't know it.